Hello and welcome to another episode of the In Between Podcast. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Hello and welcome to another episode of the In Between Podcast with your host as always, Kyle McLemore. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for staying with us through our extended break. And thank you for stopping by. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How many times can I say thank you before we get it started? But in all seriousness, thank you for stopping by. I am your host as always, Kyle McLemore, and it's great to be back. Took a little bit of a hiatus, 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 there you go, a little bit of a hiatus to work on my pronunciation, which you can see is paying off tenfold. Not really, took a break due to none your business, took a long break due to none your business. Uh, Actually, uh, let's see, what was the break due to? I think it was due to... One of those things where it starts with like a day off or two, you know, family visiting for the holidays and that it turns into a week and then two and then three. And then all of a sudden we're cranking up some months and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, are we doing this or not? And the problem with such a big gap is it's such a big gap and stuff to talk about. So many things that I want to talk about that are pretty much ancient history at this point, like for example, Saltburn. I would love to talk about Saltburn because I don't really have anybody else to talk to about it, but I mean, it also came out forever ago, you know what I mean? Like Saltburn is old news at this point. But if you haven't seen Saltburn, definitely add it to your list. It's worth the viewing at least once just to see what all the hubbub is about, what everyone's always talking about. And it's worth it entirely just for that b- b- banger of a song at the end. Mud on the dance floor. But not to blue here. Yes, good stuff. Extremely catchy. And the combination of that song plus, uh, uh, ah, man, what is that guy's name? The combination of the song plus the main dude just flopping around and dancing to that Barry Keoghan? Keoghan? Barry Keoghan. Let's get a pronunciation. Barry Keoghan Hyman. Pronunciation. Irish actor. Barry Cogan. Uh, yeah, it's a great combo of not only a b b banging song, but then b b Barry Crogan just flipping and flopping all around. If you know, you know. Uh, no spoilers, even though it came out a while ago, but uh, yeah, he's <laughs> been spoiler. Just a, a phenomenal dance routine in the nude. Uh, uh, talking about hanging down. I remember reading all this uh, stuff and, like, watching uh, interview tapes of him being like, yeah, sure, that last uh, sequence is uh, so self-conscious. Not so much about being naked, more, you know, self-conscious about just doing the weird dance. And it's like, hey, Barry Crogan. Is that what it was? Crogan? Barry Crogan. Kogan. Hey, Kogan. No shit, dude. No wonder. No, obviously you're not too self-conscious, dude, because you're carrying a fire hose between your legs, bro. It's like, yeah, of course you're not self-conscious when you're just swinging that thing. You gotta, like, throw it over your shoulder while you're doing these dance moves so you don't accidentally trip over your monster dawn, dude. Barry Cogan. Uh, yeah, so anytime I hear that song, dude, all I want to do. <laughs> so anytime I hear Met on the Dance Floor, you better not turn the blue. Anytime I hear that song, it's just a, a flip flopping kind of song, dude. It gets you in the mood to strip down and dance. 
I was actually at the dentist getting my teeth cleaned, d -d -d deep cleaning. And guess what song comes on, dude, as the dentist is like wrist deep into my mouth? Metal on the dance floor. You better not let the blue. I can't even. <laughs> I need to know the lyrics. Hang on. But yeah, I'm at the dentist. And she is deep in my mouth. And it's like, it's already. Already tough. It's one of those things where it's like you're trying so hard not to giggle. You're trying so hard to avoid any kind of like funny thought because it's like one of those things where it's like the harder you try not to laugh, I do not kill the groove. That's what it is. Duh. Not on the dance floor. You better not kill the groove. DJ, gonna burn this house right down. But yeah, so she's like digging in my mouth and just not on the dance floor. <laughs> Sir, what are you doing? What are you helicoptering for? I have to. It's murder on the dance floor. Murder on the dance floor. <laughs> like he's got like a, uh, one of those old timey like 1950s, like, I don't know, it was like a pocket watch or whatever, like the 1950s gangster that would just like stand there and twirl that little string of chain or whatever. Mud on the dance floor. I'm gonna sit here and swing my down. Like Batman. Yeah, just, that's a rope. Indiana Jones. <laughs> the new Indiana Jones. Barry Coden. Huh? He's <laughs> using his cock as a whip. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Saltburn was uh, quite the quite the film. But yeah, before we get too deep into the movie stuff, because yeah, there are a few new movies I've seen that I wanted to talk about a little bit later. We can maybe do a combination of not just uh, the in between podcast, but also the fuck did I just watch? Because I saw a few new ones. Like uh, Ghostbusters, Immaculate, uh, Late Night with the Devil. And, uh, I mean, not to waste your time, so, uh, I mean, if you're holding out for those reviews, I'll spoil them right now. They're all three not that great. So save some time on that one, but let me see here. What do we got on our list of stuff? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll save that one, but uh, we did do more, like, upcoming stuff, like uh, The Crow. Anybody seen that crow picture? Ah! Or the crow trailer's out, too. I saw the picture first, trailer second. Let's show that picture up that they first released. Ba-boom! Skarsgård is our new Eric Draven. And if there's one thing that's consistent, it's that you know that it can't rain all the time. Ba-da-bow! Crow reference. But we got the picture up. Let's look at that picture. Let's look at this picture. This was the first impression to get you really excited and tantalated about the new crow. And just look at that, dude. So it's uh, Skarsgård doing his best Machine Gun Kelly impersonation, dude. He looks like Machine Gun Kelly before he just went full on like black out with his tattoo where he just like went completely black on black on black, covering up all previous tattoos with just a slab of a Sharpie. <laughs> but yeah, basically the new era Draven looks like the before Machine Gun Kelly with like a Stupid bowl cut, dude. And just look at that nipple, dude. I hate, I hate that nipple tattoo, dude. It's the dumbest looking thing. Uh, so then they release the trailer and it's like, all right, man. Expectations are low. So let's check out the trailer. And I don't know how I feel still. Like, I still feel, uh, I kind of not expecting it to be good. Like, I didn't watch the trailer and be like, yeah, 30 years in the making, baby. Like, no, dude, I, I, I guess, I guess I can say that it's not as bad as I was expecting. I was expecting just a big plate of dog shit, of crow shit. Uh, but uh, it looks... First of all, it looks bright, which is kind of weird. It looks bright as hell. 
I'd have to watch it again, but I think there's even some scenes in the day, which is like the only thing the crow, <laughs> original crow never, maybe there's like one scene like at the police station with like that cop when he's like looking at old files and it's during the day. 99% of that movie is at nighttime. So it's just kind of weird to see oh so bright and sunny, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and also kind of colorful, which is weird too. I don't know. But then, you know, all right, so let's not get too negative. On the positive side, it does look hella violent, dude. It does look violent. Ugh, pulling that samurai sword out of himself. I mean, like, it, you know, on the violent scale, it's kind of promising. Uh, it's also got that uh, main bad guy from uh, 30 Days. Let's see if I can look up his name. 30 Days a Night. Uh, cool bad guy for sure. Great voice. There you are. Danny Huston. Huston. Danny Huston. Great bad guy. Um, no other big names that I'm seeing off the bat. Also, the director is not giving me too much hope. Also, the what's going on with the like, it's I understand, right? It's like you want to do your own thing and you don't want to do like a perfect carbon copy of the previous crow. So maybe that's why you don't want like the perfect copy of the makeup. I get it, but just having like the poopy smudge runny mascara look. It's just like, ugh, dude, lame. Uh, but I don't know. My eternal love for The Crow, uh, I mean, I'm gonna see it. Like, I've already seen it in the future, you know what I mean? I'm just catching up to me in the theater. Like, it's already, they have my money on layaway right now. So I'm gonna see it. But as far as, like, how hopeful I am, so much um and then the other big one uh where are you where are you i just saw oh yeah there it is the beetlejuice you guys catch that beetlejuice beetlejuice trailer beetlejuice beetlejuice Beetlejuice, the long-awaited sequel that nobody has really asked for ever, dude. I don't. I feel like Beetlejuice, good on its own, bro. It's like start A to B, start to finish, completes itself. It's its own thing. Had a cool animated spinoff. That's fine. No sequel needed, dude. Especially more than thirty years. Are we approaching like forty, dude? Uh, let's check it out. This is actually maybe not the best idea having a laptop. I feel like I'm getting dependent on it. Beetlejuice, eighty-eight, dude. Eighty-eight, ninety-eight, two thousand eight, two thousand eighteen, two thousand twenty-eight. Four years away from being forty years old, dude. And now let's get that sequel going, right? Because we've all been asking for it. Not really, though. And you know what's the most annoying thing? Is how much I love Beetlejuice. How much I love Michael Keaton. You know what's unfortunate? Definitely not gonna have Alec Baldwin in it, right? <laughs> Alec Baldwin making a special guest appearance at the end, just coming in hot. Blah, 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 blah. Murdering people left and right. Ooh, that's. <laughs> uh, it's actually tragically not funny, but. Did not expect to see uh, Alec Baldwin, that's for sure. Uh, and you know what the most, sorry, the most annoying thing about it is, is that it doesn't feel like it's coming from a place of like, yeah, let's, I've been working on this sequel for almost 40 years, says nobody. Even though Tim Burton coming back to direct, there's no way that Tim Burton's just been sitting on this idea for 40 years, right? Nah, dude, you know what this is? Money. You know what this is? This is. This is because. What is her name? Mia Goth. It's because Mia Goth was in that Wednesday show, and somebody was like, "Whoa, she looks kind of like Winona Ryder from Beetlejuice," and they just like made a fan picture of her as like Winona Ryder's daughter. 
that's what started the campaign for this movie, dude. It didn't come from a place of like love or creativity. It came from a place of money. It came from a place of like, hey, we can make biggity bank off of this, dude. Off of the nostalgia, dude. It does... It's just like that, ugh, it's like it's, I already know it's not going to be good because it's coming from such a ugh, place, you know? And it's got everybody coming back for their money, dude. Winoda's back, uh, the chick from Home Alone is back. But also, like, who cares, dude? Like, this movie's not going to be good. Remember when everybody was so happy to see Michael Keaton back as Batman? Nobody was happier than this guy seeing Michael Keaton, older, grayer, salt and pepper Michael Keaton. Dude, I was expecting the older Batman from Batman Beyond, you know what I mean? I want that Bruce Wayne, old, old Bruce Wayne who's still got it in there, you know? Instead, the Flash gives us this horrible abomination that, like, honestly, don't you feel like the world was probably a better place with just Michael Keaton and the 89 Batman? You know what I mean? Michael Keaton and the Batman with Danny DeVito, the 91 Batman Returns, and then that's it, right? We're good. Leave it as the masterpiece it was. But nah, dude, let's bring it back in 2024 and just shit all over the stuff you love, dude. Let's get a nice CGI Michael Keaton doing like karate over his kitchen table with like long hair so it's clearly not Michael Keaton, dude. Oh man, it's just like, oh cool. And now we did this other Keaton uh Classic, dude, Beetlejuice does not become more iconic or classic than Beetlejuice. So let's bring it back and just fuck it up, dude. Oh, man, there's just no way. There's no way for me to not feel like this is just all about the cash, baby. Hollywood. It's just like, ugh, dude. Really hard for me to get excited. And what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be about? Um, Winona Ryder's daughter says, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, he comes back, tries to marry her, and they send him back to the end. So basically the same thing, the same thing we've seen. Uh, only this time it'll be worse, dude, because uh, original Beetlejuice barely has Beetlejuice in it. That's what makes him so unbelievably great is because he's, not even in the movie that much, and when he comes on, it is just an explosion of charisma and awesomeness. This is probably gonna be j -j jam packed with so much unnecessary Beetlejuice dude that it's gonna overkill and just make it so lame. Um, yeah, just really went on a Beetlejuice tangent there, but. But I'm just not. I might be in the. I think I'm in like the minor. The, the minority class here of being like, I am not hyped for this, and I'd be okay if we just, like, skipped it, dude. And yet, having said all that, I've already seen it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm in the future watching it right now. I just gotta catch up to future Kyle. Uh, what else? Oh, boy, Beetlejuice. It just makes me sad looking at it, too, because then it's like... He's also older, too, so it's like, the fuck, dude? You're also, like, aging in the afterlife? Like, you're doing, ah. And then let me guess. You're just gonna pump in the CGI, dude. Let's just pump up the CGI. Pump it up. Pump up the jam. Ah, uh, yeah, but more upcoming. Conzilla. Conzilla. I think I've talked about it before. I think there's a rumor going around that, like, Kong jumps onto Godzilla and is, like, riding him, I think, which would be amazing, which would be worth all the money in the world <laughs> to see. Uh, it's funny because, like, I am so protective of other franchises. Don't fuck up the crow. Don't fuck up Battle Juice. Uh, Battle Juice. Battle Juice. <laughs> Beetlejuice 3. Battle Juice. Um, but... 
you know, when it comes to Conzilla, I'm just like, fuck it up, dude. Go to go, incorporate all the franchises you want. Let's just, this is already in another dimension of bananas. So just keep the foot on the pedal, dude, and go full throttle. That part where they're just like all running together, teaming up, dude. I, I don't, I don't want them just running up together. I want them to like, I think I've talked about it before, like do the, the power handshake, or the, the Schwarzenegger, the predator, Carl Weathers handshake of ultimate bro power. But I want to go even a step further than that, dude. Let's throw in the Top Gun high five for King Kong and Godzilla. I want them to walk up and do that one where you go up high and then bring it back down low, dude, Top Gun style. I want them walking by going, yeah, woo. <laughs> do like some chest bumping action, dude, that'd be the shit. Or do like that, that football thing where they kind of run up and like bump into each other. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I cannot wait for that to be and it's probably going to be long as fuck, too. It's going to be like three hours of just bonkers, bananas, conzilla action, dude. I'm actually really looking forward to... I still don't really grasp who the bad guy is. It's like a rogue con. It's like a evil red con. Oh, the ultimate nemesis evil con. We'll see... We will definitely see. I mean, I'm already seeing that one too. I'm in the future already watching it. Ba, ba, ba. I think that covers all the ones that are coming out. So now we can switch over to what I've seen. You guys seen Imaginary? Imagination. I feel like Imaginary was split. Like, I feel like somebody came into the room with like one idea for like Imaginary Friends and they were like, hmm, we could go two ways with this. Crazy horror franchise or kid franchise? Let's just do both. Because there's like two imaginary movies coming. It's Imaginary, the horror one, and then If, Imaginary Friend with Ryan Reynolds, where he's like, I don't know, they like repurpose Imaginary Friends. Like, oh, my kid grew up. Now I need a new kid. That kind of a thing. It just seems odd to have two imaginary friend movies like so close together but anyway imaginary the bloom house the horror film the what's his name charlie no maybe we shouldn't play together charlie what was his name whatever a uh, little stuffed bear uh, boy that movie um there was something i wanted to oh that's what it was uh, the movie is uh, not great. It's one of those ones where it's like interesting idea, interesting i interesting concept. Ooh. Excuse me, uh, interesting concept of like you know, evil imaginary friend. <coughs> they also kind of delve into this uh, imaginary world. It's like they kind of touch on it, but then they don't go into it enough. It's like. At the end, it's like this big imaginary world once they go through the door, like into imaginary land. And I thought maybe it was like a combination world of like all these different imaginary creatures, but it seems to be just one. So then it's like, does does each imaginary have like its own world? Like, And then it's also like all these doors and rooms. It's weird. It's like, okay, is this other beings? It, it just raises a ton of questions it's just like an interesting idea. Interesting idea, but in practice, not so hot. There's a part where I was roaring with laughter, dude. Roaring with laughter. This is the part where like she's uh got the psychiatrist and like she's like, well, why don't we talk to your bear and see what's up with that? And so she's like filming her with a camera and she's like talking to the bear. But she's got like her head turned, so you can't really like see her talking. Because she's doing the stupid imaginary friend voice. I don't want to be your friend anymore. No. No, Charlie, love you. Why, why can't I remember the stupid bear's name? It's not Charlie, but I keep wanting to call it Charlie. 
But there's a part where like it's the big reveal is like the little girl goes, oh, it turns around, but like the voice is still talking, so it's like it's not the little girl. The reveal is like, oh, the little girl's not not making the voice, huh? But the best part is the reaction of the psychiatrist, dude. The reaction of the psychiatrist is like she goes to the she goes to the dad and she's like, I can't even remember if it's a dad or a mom. She goes to the parent and she's like, I must, I must ask you something. Please be honest with me. Has your daughter taken up any hobbies recently? And they're like, what? What do you mean? Has your daughter taken up any hobbies like ventriloquism? I just lost it, dude. I started howling, dude. I was laughing so hard. Tell me, please, I must know, does your daughter, is she a big fan of Jeff Dunham, the comedian? I must know, please. Does she love the puppets? I must know. It's the only explanation. She must be the world's biggest Jeff Dunham fan. There's no other explanation as to how these voices can conjure themselves. It's whack. It's so whack, but just that ventriloquist part, dude, had me... Die and laughing, dude. The ridiculousness to be like, hmm. Has your daughter been ta- has your daughter been going to any open mics recently with a doll? Uh, yeah, terrible. Not a good one. Um, but with more r- 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 recent movies. <clears throat> Like I said, I saw Ghostbusters, Immaculate, and Late Night with the Devil. <clears throat> That's right, it's a triple horror screening. Does Ghostbusters count as horror? It's got horror elements. Spooky ghosts, spooky spirits. <clears throat> the concept of death, I mean... It's a tough, you know, it's a, it's a tough line to walk before, you know, going too hard on the spiritual and scariness. So what do we talk? Which is the more interesting? All right, we'll start with Ghostbusters. Busting makes me feel good. One of those things where it's like, on paper, I should be all over this, dude. On paper, this should be my jam. Ghostbusters, check. Bill Murray, check. Paul Rudd, check, dude. Why are these all checking into the positive? But it's such an unfun experience for me. So, has anyone seen the first one? Can anybody remember the first one, dude? I had zero recollection of that movie other than just like the image of the Ghostbuster car tearing through like a field. So I rewatched it, and surprise, it's not that good. No wonder I can't remember it. Not that great. So then this one, it's like, oh, here we go. Uh, Also, not that great. Uh, Dude, talk about a movie that just bored the hell out of me. Two hours of boredom. And then also, it really takes away from the stuff in the first movie. The first movie is all about, like, building this family, It's like a broken family, a little girl, a little boy, both coming of age, and they're a single mom who's, like, in financial ruin. It's like a lot of family drama all trying to come together, falling in love with Paul Rudd. So in this one, it's like, okay, right on track with, like, still trying to be a family and Paul Rudd trying to find his way. But then it's also weirdly divided like the brother is like not even in it and then also like the love interest uh the chick like the only other girl in the movie uh, she returns but then there's also like no interaction with like her and any of the main cast specifically the stranger things kid they don't interact so like the whole chemistry and like uh, love between them is gone evidently uh it doesn't Paul Rudd and that main girl have the weirdest, like, bro romance. Like, it doesn't feel romantic at all. It feels BFF. If they're constantly just like, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's my dog. I love you, dog. Yeah, bro. That's their, that's their relationship. Is like, uh, and then also, man, for a mom, she's, like, weirdly 
on it with the clap bats, dude. Like, uh, her daughter will say something and she just claps back hard AF. And it's like, hey, you're my mom. Maybe you shouldn't be lighting me up like that. This isn't, uh, are you my mom or are you Jeff Ross, dude? What is going on? But I don't know, it just feels weirdly disconnected, like in the family part, and then, and then, like, maybe there's a part I missed in the first one. Maybe there's a moment where they give a little exp explanation of what's going on, because in the second one, they're like, oh, dang, call in the ghost squad, or whatever, and it's like, what? There's like a whole, uh, R&D department, there's like a whole research and development like, James Bond, you know how he has Q, like, the dude who's making all the gadgets and, like, studying stuff? I guess there's just, like, a Ghostbusters Q. There's, like, this nerdy guy that's like, what's up, I'm part of the Ghost Squad, or whatever the fuck they're called. And they're like, yeah, we study ghosts, and we're trying to figure out ghosts and, you know, stuff with ghosts. And it's like, okay, uh, I guess there's, like, this random whole ghost-busting organization that I had no idea about. And, well, I just had it to, uh, uh, yeah, oh, there it is, because it's like, also, they raise a lot of questions about, like, ghosts and the afterlife and spirits, they raise a lot of questions, and at the same time, they don't care about the questions, it's weird, it's like, at the beginning, they're like, jamming all these ghosts into <laughs> They're just jamming ghosts into this one little storage tube from the 80s. And they're like, boy, this thing's getting full, whatever. But I that know, 30 plus years of just stuffing ghosts into a tube. Never once. And that was also like, I remember like, I remember thinking about that. Like whenever I saw the original movies being like, huh. So they're just like stuffing spirits into like a canister. And that's just how you spend your afterlife? It's just in a canister? Like, so they raise a lot of questions like that about, like, why didn't you pass over? And, like, oh, uh, why are you still roaming around? But then there's also, like, it's really shining a light on, like, what is going on, dude? Like, there has to be, like, you got to start making sense of it a little because it's like, why are there spirits and ghosts? Like, was that Mia Goth? I don't even know. It looked kind of like her, but I bet you it was. Come on, confirm it. I already know. All right, it wasn't Mia Goth. It was just some lady that looked kind of like Mia Goth. But whatever, she's like a burnt-up spirit. Burnt up spirit just walking around. And then there's other ghosts that are like, you know, people walking around just looking like ghosts. Like people. The people versions of their ghost selves. But then there's also like a dragon spirit flying around. And there's also like, you know, the main bad guy with the horns. Like a crazy demonic deity. And there's also like whatever the hell Slimer is. And whatever the hell. There's like a... Uh, one of the spirits is called the... God, what is it called? The Possessor. That's the Possessor spirit. It's just like this little tiny ray of light that just jumps into inanimate objects. So it's like, was that a person at one point? Was that a person at one point, or is it just like a ray of light? Does it exist as just a <laughs> particle? I don't, it, it just raises so many questions of just like, what? So are there, do you become, huh? It's just like, keep stacking on the question. And the whole time, they're just like, whatever. And another thing that's very weird about Ghostbusters is the amount of stuff that's shown in the trailer that was not in the movie. It was so weird. There's a major part of the trailer where they're like, whoa, look at how freezing cold. Because the girl's like, but like the ice is going up. And then it's like, huh, and there's like a vivid shot of like it like freezing over her eyeball like I remember it in the trailer dude and then in the movie it gets to where she's like and then just like hard cut to like she has a blanket over her and she's like boy that was who that got chilly and it's like what what happened to the whole thing in the trailer with like her face freezing 
And then also there's like that big part of the trailer at the very end with like everybody up on top of the building and Paul Rudd is like, oh, never happened in the movie, dude. Like, what? Again, maybe I missed it. Maybe, oh, dude, because whatever it is about this movie, it is so, so disconnected. There's, nobody feels... Nobody feels connected to anybody. It just so was hard for me to lock in, dude. I was zoned out. I was on my phone a lot, dude. And, okay, there's, I wish I knew why because there is no explanation. There's a part where out of nowhere for like a solid 10 minutes, Dan Aykroyd is just wearing sunglasses. Like inside of a building, he's just wearing sunglasses. And it's like, uh, okay, uh... Is he going to take him off at some point or like is he – I thought for like a second I was like, oh, he must be like possessed and like he's wearing glasses to hide his evil eyes or something. Nope, just wearing sunglasses for no reason. And then later Bill <laughs> – later during the ultimate battle, Bill Murray – I don't – it's – like they show him just normal and then like the next scene he has like sunglasses on while they're outside in a snowstorm fighting demons and it's like – where did those come from? Why are you wearing... What, what is with the sunglasses? I don't... There was just a lot where I was just like, huh? And then, am I the only one that doesn't understand the Stay Puft Marshmallow thing? I remember being so weirded out in the first movie. Because is it... Is it just me that like, doesn't get the humor of... Because they have all the... I understand the many part... How do you make something popular that's really old? Oh, you make it a small, cute version, right? How do we, like, redo that with Star Wars? Well, let's get a small, little, cute baby Yoda, huh? How do we do that with Ghostbusters? Small, little, baby, cute, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, huh? But then they do this other thing, too, where it's like, for some reason, they all keep murdering each other and, like murdering themselves like in the first movie they keep like jumping into the they're just like yay and jumping into the blender and then they're like ha like they're roasting themselves over the fire and then there's like one that's like ah laying down in a s'more while they like heat it up and burn it to death it's like this weird (laughs) this weird thing where like they just kept murdering each other and themselves but it's done in a it's done in context of being like humorous. And I just remember watching it being like, is this, am I supposed to be like laughing? Is it supposed to be cute that they keep like dying horrifically? Like they're like being pushed through like, they're just like, ha ha, like it's just weird. It's just like, I don't understand this weird uh, cutesy, cutesy despair. I don't know. They kind of did that in uh, Super Mario too. Was it Super? Yeah, it was Super Mario, where there was just like a star. There was like this weird star that was like, yay, we're all going to die horribly now. Ha ha, life is meaningless. And it's like, what? What is this weird uh, suicidal star in uh, Super Mario Brothers? Like, huh? Uh, But yeah, uh, Ghostbusters, not my thing. So should we talk Immaculate or should we talk... Late night with the devil, immaculate, sure, because I'm dying to talk about Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney, who is really rocketing into the stratosphere of popularity because, god damn, she's really taking off and getting a lot of roles because, god damn. Uh, Speaking of, yeah, that is literally uh, probably my favorite slang word right now is, yeah. And nobody encapsulates, encapsulates, nobody sums up a word quite like, <clears throat> yeah, more than Sydney Sweeney because literally, Dude, I saw that. What is that stupid movie? Um, Anyone But You? Anyone But You. It's like a romantic comedy. Not that great. But yeah, damn, dude. It's not even just Sydney Sweeney, dude. Anyone, anyone But You? 
Anyone but you, anyone but you, literally every single person in that movie, even like a random extra in the background is like, yeah, damn, dude. Everyone in that movie is breathtakingly gorgeous, dude. Every single, like, not even just Sydney Sweeney, dude. It was like all the supporting, all the side characters, just like, God damn. Dude, even the main dude, uh, whatever his name, from uh, Top Gun, that guy is also on the stratosphere of like popularity because that guy is also, yeah, dude. <laughs> dude, that guy, I. Honestly, was like, oh shit. There's like a scene where he's like doing crunches. I'm like, oh, bro, I, I gotta start doing some crunches too. Yeah, damn. Had me doing crunches in the theater, dude. I was just like, jeez. But Sydney, so who any? My goodness. So uh, you know, I'm gonna see anything with her, even if it's immaculate, which. Spoiler, not that great, but also spoiler, not exactly what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just your typical, you know, baby devil. I thought it was just your typical Satan baby kind of thing. Turns out it's not. It's more like a Jesus clone kind of thing. More like, a, hey, we found some Jesus DNA and we going to make a baby with it. <laughs> it's kind of like more like that lane, which is like, you know, it was a nice... Surprised to have it not be Satan related. It's nice to get a break from Satan, you know, always taking the blame for everything. So that was kind of refreshing. But as a whole, not that great. And you know what also kind of took away is that although Sydney Sweeney is yeah, gorgeous in it, um, the only time they really start showing her off is when she's well into pregnancy. So it's like this weird combination of like mm, pregnant, but also yeah. <laughs> overall not that great. And then there's also like a scene at the end where she spoiler gives birth and it's basically a like two minute shot, zoom in on her face and she's just like <gasps> screaming into the camera at full volume, full force. So like two minutes of a lady just screaming in my face with maximum theater volume. I was like, okay, maybe make this scene shorter. Uh, overall, not that great though. Skip it. Unless you're a big Sweeney fan like I am. And that brings us to Late Night with the Devil. And you know what? This one I was primed for, dude. This one I was, like, really excited for multiple reasons. I mean, it was kind of low budge, which is cool. I mean, it's got, like, this interesting idea. Uh, I think the, I didn't see a trailer. I didn't see nothing but the poster and the synopsis. Poster is great. Poster, fantastic. Very 70s, very grindhouse -y, very uh, retro kind of feel. Old school horror. Very cool. Cast. Uh, what's his name? David Desmachian? I only know his name because I had to say it so many times when I did the review of something with him in it. David Desmachian. I think that's what his name is. So I'm like, hey, I like David Desmachian. The dude's cool, dude. Anytime you want like a creepy weirdo, you call David Desmachian. I'm gonna feel bad if that's not how you pronounce his last name. But if you want a creepy weirdo, you call David, dude. Dark Knight, when he was like the weird uh, cop that they capture. Yeah. Uh, how about, uh, what was that movie? Hugh Jackman, Prisoners, dude. Is he in Prisoners? Let's see what else David Desmachian is in. Because I'm telling you, anytime you want a weirdo. Oh, Suicide Squad. He's also in Dune as, like, you know, weird, bald, pale guy. And he was, like, the weird guy in Suicide Squad. And ba-da-ba-ba-ba. What else you in? Yeah, that's like, those are the big hits. But, you know, I feel like it proves my point of anytime you want, like, a creepy weirdo, you... Typecast David Das Malchian. I was right on the pronunciation. Um, because he nails it. So it's like, all right, I like this dude. I like the idea of the movie. Let's check it out. But you know what's not great is 
honestly, the casting of David Desmalchin, because like I said, anytime you want like a creepy weirdo, he's your guy. You know what you don't want him as? A rival to Johnny Carson? What, dude? It's like, they're, they're building it up like crazy. Like, oh, he's the ultimate late night. It's like, think about late night host, dude. Conan O'Brien, Jay Leno, Craig Ferguson. Dude, all those guys, undeniably charming, undeniably funny, silly. You have to be so charming that they get you instantaneously, right? That's their job as a late night every night. You got to be good right away to get into people's homes. David Dalsmachian is not Johnny Carson, dude. He's not a rival to Johnny Carson. He's not a Conan. He does not fit as like a late night host, dude. He doesn't come off as like charming and like, hey, hey, like, it's just like David Dalsmachian, dude. He's the dark night weirdo. He's the guy from Suicide Squad just pretending to be a late night host. So out of the gate, I'm like, ooh, this is not meshing. Like, it's just not working, dude. And then they just go off the rails, dude, because they set it up as like, okay, here we go. We had, well, oh boy, everybody knows about that crazy show from the 70s. Well, we got the tape. So now we can show you what happened. So it's like you're watching a recording. You're watching a studio recording. So everything is from a studio camera. Or they say, like, oh, we also found some behind-the-scenes footage. So they have the stuff that's like happening on the show, and they go, all right, we'll be right back after a, a few words from our sponsor. And it goes, Bleh. cuts to black and white, and it's like a behind-the-scenes guy like shooting behind-the-scenes footage. So it's like, okay, all right, all right, I'm with you. But then they just like throw it out the window. They're just like, nah, forget it. And they just start setting up like three shot cameras. And it's like, what happened to the, what happened to the behind the scenes? What happened to the, you know, there's a dude, like there's literally shots where they're like having like private conversations. And it's like, okay, either you're implying that there's a guy standing a foot away from you, just like private conversations about like the <laughs> Private conversations, like, this close to someone's face, just like, hmm, hope they don't mind me shooting this behind-the-scenes footage while they're, like, having an intense conversation. You get the fucking guest out here. Your ratings are going down. Our whole show is going to be canceled. And the camera guy's just right here. Hmm, this is going to be good later. Behind-the-scenes footage. They won't even notice me here. So the fact that they just, like, really nearly are just, like, floating in and out of that whole concept, it's just like, huh? Trying to think if there was any like redeeming factors. There was a guy who was like the uh, skeptic. He was good, and then like the whole tone of it too is like, uh, man, I don't know. He's got like his Andy Richter, you know, like his sidekick guy who's like, Whoa, just there to make stupid comments. Out of nowhere, he's like, the whole movie, he's like, whoa, ho, ho, just being like stupid and silly. And then out of the blue, he's just like, you're meddling with powers you don't understand. And it's like, what, where, where did that come from? Where, where, who the fuck are you all of a sudden? You don't understand. You're meddling with powers beyond your conception. You're meddling with powers beyond what we understand. But who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Oh, dude, speaking of Connor, you guys seen uh, Roadhouse? Roadhouse. Who the fuck is that guy with Connor McGregor making his acting debut with Jake Gyllenhaal? It's, it's okay. I mean, if you want just like bananas action, weird stuff. Weird stuff, though. Like, you know, if you start to pick little things, it's like, huh? Like, for example, Post Malone is just, like, fighting at the beginning in this, in the weirdest looking fucking fight night, dude. I'm talking, like, PlayStation 1 fight night graphics. It's, like, this weird, they keep splicing it. It's really hard to explain why it looks so weird because it's, like, you can tell it's him fighting. But then when they go for the contact, it, like, blurs into, like, this weird fight night animation. It's weird. It's weird. It's also very weird that he is, like, so heavily introduced at the beginning. No, 
never seen again, dude. I was like, oh, they'll bring him back at the end. He'll be like, you know, they'll bring him back to be like an ally at the end or something. To, we need backup. Somebody call a post from the beginning of the movie. Nope. He's just in it at the beginning fighting for like a minute. And he's just like, I'm out of here. Man. <laughs> All right. And then how did uh, McGregor do? He was... Honestly, okay, he's very smiley. I guess he's going for like a complete psycho. Just literally the whole movie doesn't stop smiling, which in a way kind of works, dude. Uh, in a way, if I had a crazy smiley Conor McGregor walking towards me, I think I'd shit myself, dude, because he's just like... <laughs> The most insane grin, uh, and something about that dude just walking towards you so happy is, uh, kinda terrifying. So, like, in a weird way, it kinda worked. Uh, and then, like, uh, he basically, who the fuck? Dude, he says it, like, legitimately, like, three times in the movie. There's a part where, like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, I'm clothes shopping. Who the fuck do you care? <laughs> hey, where the fuck is that roadhouse? Who the fuck is that guy? It was, it was cool. It was like, you know, it was all right for like his debut. It was also interesting, too, to think about the amount of makeup because he's already pretty tatted. And they had to like tat over his tats with like makeup. And it's like a lot. So I can only imagine how much time spent in makeup. Who the fuck is my makeup artist? <laughs> uh, but overall, I mean, like, uh, not bad. I didn't like the fighting stuff was cool. Jay Gyllenhaal was cool. Jay Gyllenhaal shredded. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shredded as well. Who the fuck is... It's really fun to do a Conor McGregor. Who the fuck is that guy? Um, how we doing on time here? Lots of movie talk rolling over the 50 minute mark. That pretty much runs through all the stuff I wanted to talk about. Trying to think if there's anything on. Well, we can probably just call it there, but thank you so much for tuning in. Who would have fought is that? <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in to the In Between Podcast. Thank you so much for sticking around to the very end here. And if you haven't already, make sure you slap the old like and subscribe button as it's much appreciated. Tell a friend, tell a family member, play it in your car, force your family members and friends to listen to the pod, make them a fan. Just kidding, of course, but not really. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. I know it's been a minute, but we appreciate you sticking with us and we'll try to keep pumping out the content straight to you. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the pod.